Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this beautiful neighbor of ours, Venus. In this video we're going to discuss some of the recent research that suggests that we may have been actually wrong about the surface of Venus. We've always thought that the surface here was relatively dead. In other words, there's no volcanoes, there's just a lot of heat, a lot of pressure and a lot of gases. For the most part, Venus has always been imagined as a kind of a deadly feature of Earth. In other words, this is what happens when plate tectonics no longer exist and when you can't really fix any more carbon dioxide and it sort of escapes into the atmosphere, the extreme greenhouse effect. But the recent research and summary of various scientific findings of the last few years from Paul Byrne suggests otherwise. It suggests that Venus is quite active even today. In other words, this beautiful planet might be a lot more mysterious than we thought originally. Now, for the longest time, uh, scientists believed that approximately 250 to maybe 750 million years ago, Venus had a major eruption that resurfaced everything, changed the entire landscape, and since then, Venus was relatively inactive volcanically. For the longest time, scientists also believed that it might happen again sometime in the future, but not just yet. But recent research, and most importantly, recent observations, kind of showed us that we were wrong. First of all, we've discovered several areas on Venus, specifically areas that you can kind of see if you look beneath the atmosphere, and usually this is done by scanning the surface of Venus with radar. Some of these surface features here are only about 250,000 years old, and that's relatively young even for a planet like Earth, because here only, like for example, islands in Hawaii or certain other regions that are currently being developed by volcanoes and by various types of volcanism are that young. And the reason we know that they're so young is because they lack weathering effects. They seem to resemble something very, very recently created. And that definitely goes against the previous theories that suggested there was no volcanism on Venus. At the same time, um, if you were to look around the surface of this beautiful planet, you wouldn't really find any large um, craters or any large formations from collisions from anything really. In other words, something seems to constantly remove craters and um, collisions from the surface. Now, if it's just atmosphere, atmospheric corrosion, it would still leave some impact signs. However, on Venus there is practically nothing. And this also suggests that there is constant resurfacing and constant change in the appearance of um, upper crust. In other words, most likely volcanoes. There is still probably a lot of active volcanoes. Now, we obviously haven't seen any actual eruptions like this, even though this is probably what it looks like, but we have seen the signs of past volcanic eruptions from relatively recently that may have changed the surface quite dramatically. And here's actually one of those images that was produced by one of the probes flying around Venus that um, indicates the surface here is somewhat young, with the obvious only explanation possible that this was done by a recent volcanic eruption. And here's one such example of a potential proof that some of the regions here are still volcanic. This object here, Idas Mons, is probably a volcano. You can see that it's a lot hotter on the inside than in the surroundings, suggesting that there is something really hot and very pressurized inside that most likely escapes once in a while and probably creates new volcanic features around this object. Now, interestingly, we don't really have a good explanation for how this happens, but it seems that it's definitely happening all over the surface. And the current estimate for the number of these volcanoes is around 1600. And that's a lot of volcanoes. That means that the entire surface of Venus will most likely change over time in the next few million years and will look completely different. And remember, here on Earth, we have things like plate tectonics that usually are responsible for generating a lot of um, volcanism and a lot of volcanic eruptions. But how it happens on Venus is a mystery to us. There is, however, at least one explanation, at least a suggestion. So the scientists behind this study believe that instead of plate tectonics, Venus might have something like this. These circles that you see here represent mini plate tectonics. Fragments of rock literally just floating on top of the mantle, similar to how ice floats on top of water. 
And as these fragments float, sometimes they squeeze the surface, sometimes they stretch the surface. And this generates a lot of different activity and of course volcanoes. Very different from how it works on Earth. But this is the only explanation we have so far for what might happen or what is happening on the surface of Venus. And this also suggests that the surface of Venus is very thin, very stretchy and very, very, very mobile. It sort of is more elastic -y and a lot more flexible and bendable compared to the surface of Earth. And it is also probably filled with a lot of really interesting stuff. Now today, the scientists also believe that inside of Venus there is a large deposit of water. The reason scientists believe that is because Venus doesn't have plate tectonics and because of that a lot of water is trapped inside the planet. And although here on Earth our planet has lost approximately half of its internal reserves of water that eventually made its way to the surface and is now literally oceans here, on Venus this never happened. The water is still trapped there and only about a quarter of the entire um, deposits may have escaped previously. And right now the scientists believe that at least three quarters of Venusian water are still there inside. So this is actually good news because one day we could potentially change the atmosphere of Venus. In other words, we could somehow terraform it, removing all of this toxic and highly, highly uh, dangerous atmosphere that is currently there and replace it with something nicer and more beautiful. And then if we can find a way to um, somehow release this water, it will probably turn into oceans, turning Venus into a terraformed world. It would not be as challenging as Mars because Venus already has all the prerequisites on the inside, we just have to release them. Whereas obviously Mars doesn't even have enough water or enough of anything for us to sustain a livable world on the surface unless we bring it from somewhere else. And let's actually change this a little bit so it looks a little bit more Earth-like because I think it has way too much water. And here we go. Here's what Venus might look like if all of the water from the inside escaped and if the atmosphere wasn't so crazy hot. In other words, if we somehow remove the atmosphere of Venus and make it more habitable, this is what we expect to see. And so this particular study and this investigation actually provides really good news for the future of humanity if one day we decide to settle Venus. It um, essentially explains that Venus is still active. It also explains that there is most likely a lot of water hidden inside. And most importantly, it allows us to kind of dream and think about how we could maybe terraform it one day and change it into an Earth-like planet. However, unfortunately, we just don't have enough data right now to investigate anything else because there are only two missions that are active on Venus. There is the Japanese Akatsuki, um, which struggled a little bit in the beginning, but is currently trying to study Venus a little bit more. And there is the Venus Express probe, both of which are just not producing enough data. We need to send more probes, just like we do with Mars, to try to investigate this beautiful planet and find out what we can do to make it more habitable. Even if not uh, on the actual surface, at least maybe we could try to find a way to build some kind of a cloud city or cloud colony in the upper atmosphere of Venus where it's actually one atmospheric pressure. You could totally live there except for maybe the nauseous dangerous gases. As long as you have a mask you should be fine. And anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Just a little bit more good news about Venus and hopefully one day we'll have some more. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon if you'd like to help this channel grow. And most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.